What's up YouTube, we are back again with a new video. My name is Danny James and on this channel I make content around music video editing, dope transitions and styles that can improve your workflow. In this particular video you will learn 6 techniques to improve your overall workflow whenever you are editing any music video. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you enjoy the content subscribe because I make weekly tutorials that will be very useful in the long end. Now without further ado let's jump right into it. On my timeline I have a bunch of clips for a music video which I worked on. I just imported everything into the project bin together with the audio. Now right here beside on the left hand side the same project which has been worked on. So I'll use it to reference some of the things that we have done because it will be time consuming to repeat some things all over again. The first tip that I have for you is to organize your files into bins. Now looking at my project bin, it's very hard to start with a project bin like this one. The best thing that I would advise for you, you can go onto your assemblies tab or you can use just as it is and go to full screen. Yeah, once you've moved to your assembly tab, it's very straightforward. Create new bins whereby you will compartmentalize all your footage. I'll do this real quick. Once I'm done creating folders for these bins, it's time to begin moving the files to their respective bins. This song had three artists. Now what I did, I just come here, hold shift, select, and then you can hit cut and then come down below and then you come and paste into this bin. The six items have been moved. Now I'll go on doing the same thing. This video had models and there were b-rolls for the models, b-rolls for the cars, and there was also general performance by the crew and there was also a b-roll for the crew. So I'll move everything into their respective bins. And also something that you should note, you can preview what you're doing by hovering your mouse so that you can get a better look at what's happening. Now I'm done putting every item into every folder so it should be very easier for us to work now. I'll give you an overall overview of this. For the red artist, I just named him red artist because he was wearing something red. If I need anything about him, I'll just find him right here and then I can just select. If I know I need some b-rolls for the models, I just jump right into this one and I'll find anything I'm literally looking for very easily. Now this is the advantage of having this organization into your work it will speed up your workflow if i need general b-rolls these are just overall b-rolls like this for the city and this other one is for also the city against the lake and some other items i have the car b-rolls right here and that will make my work easier when whenever i'm coming to edit if i need a shot of the car it will just be right here now that's basically it organization is very important off to the second tip that i have for you is to segment your timeline into sections uh this is what i mean this is actually by using markers now let's say we have this timeline let me create a new timeline right here by dropping the audio i'll zoom into it and that's my timeline that's my basic timeline my tip is to do like this come up to this place hit m to get a marker double click on that marker and then you can label this one intro. Now don't leave it at that point, extend this duration so that it goes for a few seconds. And then once that happens, you can drag it back from the beginning to this point. I'm guessing the intro comes up to this place. And then you can also change the colors for these labels. After that, you can create another marker. Let's say the chorus comes right here. I'll name this hook, put it into white, and then I'll extend the duration, jump right in, put it like that. Now what this does, it gives you an overview of what your timeline looks like so you'll know where to edit and it will help you focus on one area at one point and actually know where everything belongs. I'll show you what I did in my other timeline. Uh, this is what I did. I didn't label the intro because I would automatically know the important thing was to know the first artists, how long the rap goes on and then the second artist once again and then Again, the first artist comes here again. He has another verse for a few seconds. And that way I was able to track my timeline very easily. Off to the third tip that I have for you is to label your layers. Labeling your clips makes it easy for you to reference back. To give you a better context into this, let me go back to this timeline. Now, when I look at this timeline, I can see some pink labels. 
and whenever i look at them i know it's a performance shot by the first artist now i can see here it's it's a shot against a ship and also on this other one don't worry i have many layers right above so i'm actually able to know what's what belongs where before you drop your items onto your timeline let's say we're in this bin for the crew performance highlight on all your layers right click and then give them a label you can give them a rose let's say and then if we come back let's go to the models bureaus just highlight all the clips give them another label now you won't be able to see the colors as they are but once you start dropping them into your timeline like in this example i'll pick an in and out for this video in and out and if i drop it it has that yellow and that will happen with every other clip that is within that even this one if i drop it it has the yellow and if we go back and drag the crew performance any shot from here it will have these rows just any of these this will help you so that you don't have to start labeling them once they are in the timeline and now this is better for me to work with I'd like to remind you that you can customize the colors for your labels. All you have to do is go to edit, go to preferences, and then go to labels. Now it brings me to this preferences tab. You can give a label a particular color and give it a name. Like we can give this one, let's say bright green. Once you've changed it, you can also change the name here, bright green, so that you can easily reference with it. And the same thing can happen with all other colors that you want to do so. The fourth tip that I have for you is to start with the basics. I will jump back to the timeline which I had worked on for this music video. I'll play this back. Let me play the first 20 seconds. back to my point uh, what i wanted to show you is that for this first 20 seconds and actually the entire timeline since i was doing this i was doing the rough edit for another editor i actually used no effects here i was just playing with the speed ramps and small things like this is a bundle just for the opening that's the only biggest effect that i did everything else maybe was a slow-mo like like you can see this clip was back to 50 percent i have some keyframes these are all for speed ramps okay let me copy this clip and bring it into our sample timeline this is what happened to the clip i'll duplicate it on this other clip i'll remove the attributes for speed so the original clip looks like this Once I came adding a few keyframes for speed ramp, all you have to do is to, you see these little FX, right click and make sure you are enabled to time. Now this will help you adjust keyframes. Now I'll raise this small slider and you can see we change the speed from 100 to 160. I can put it on 200. My trick is to go 5-10 frames. I'm holding shift and the right arrow direction buttons to go 10 frames and then hold control and click to add a keyframe since right now we are at 200 percent drop it down to something like 60 percent it starts fast and then it slows down once it does that you can stop it right there hold control click right here to add a keyframe and then put it back again to 200 and then at this point i let it go on for five frames and then i'll drop it back down to the original speed which is 100 now let's look at how this clip changes that's the simple things which i'm talking about you don't need to start with cool effects right off the bat you can do that later on but as you're starting your music video just try to do the basics first the fifth tip that i have for you is to use b-rolls extensively i'll play this video so that you can reference and see how much we use the b-rolls on this video and now i'll show you the first verse by the artist you'll observe whenever you see a b-roll so let me unmute it You'd observe that uh, most of this is it's shifting from performance for performance and then b-roll 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 performance b-roll performance b-roll 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 
So there is no specific technique on to using it. What I'm encouraging you is to use B-rolls as much as you can in your timeline. Don't have the performance shots only playing. Break that monotony with some B-rolls and some other stuff which is not necessarily the artist rapping the song. And that should really make your music videos look way much interesting. Now on to the last tip that I have for you is to have a rough cut and back it up in another timeline. So usually what I do, this is the timeline which I had edited already. Now once maybe you've edited 20 seconds or 1 minute through, I advise you to just hit Ctrl A to copy everything. So I just copied everything and then Ctrl A to select everything and then Ctrl C to copy everything. And then what I do afterwards, I go and create a new sequence and I can name this one rough cut. You can adjust the settings and everything and then come and paste everything onto it. Now what this does, it leaves you room to come back to this other timeline and make any adjustments without necessarily fearing that you might have altered something that's really important because you should be able to come back into this other one that you had edited and seen what you had done. Now that's what I do especially in the first stage where, whereby I'm just placing clips and clips and then also make sure to save that sequence so it will, should be right here. When you have that backup of, a, of your sequence, you're able to make any adjustments that you need to without worrying so much about anything that you might change. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I also hope that it was very informative and useful for you as a creator. Now, if you have anything to add on to this, just add it into the comments below. I'm happy to interact with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you enjoy such content, you can also subscribe because I make weekly tutorials that will be very helpful in the long run. My name is Danny James. See you in the next video. Cheers.